So in this video, we're just going to look at how to determine whether you can actually use the mean value theorem. So first example says, determine whether the mean value theorem can be applied to the function f of x equals x squared minus 2x over the closed interval from 0 to 2. And the key is to recognize that the mean value theorem only has two requirements that need to be met. First, your function has to be continuous on the closed interval you're interested in, and then it needs to be differentiable over the open interval in which you are interested. And by differentiable, we just mean that the derivative of the function you're working with has to exist. So when I take this function in this example, and there's gonna be multiple examples in this particular video, so we're starting kind of with the simplest possible case. So if we take x squared minus 2x, what we want to recognize is that we have a second degree polynomial. So the domain of any polynomial is negative infinity to infinity. And so clearly f of x is going to be continuous over the closed interval from 0 to 2 because the closed interval from 0 to 2 is a subset of the open interval from negative infinity to infinity. So if f of x is continuous over its domain, that's what we mean when we talk about the domain. What are the set of inputs over which the function is continuous? If it's continuous from negative infinity to infinity, then clearly it's continuous over the closed interval from 0 to 2. So it meets criteria 1. So if we look at the derivative, which is just going to be 2x minus 2, 2x minus 2 is a linear, linear function, which is also a polynomial. And we don't know that the domain of any polynomial is from negative infinity to infinity. So because this is a first degree polynomial, we know that it is it exists over the interval from negative infinity to infinity. So clearly it is differentiable over the open interval from 0 to 2. So we meet both criteria for using the mean value theorem. f of x equals x squared minus 2x is both continuous on the closed interval from 0 to 2 and its derivative exists on the open interval from 0 to 2. So now we can look at this next example. We have f of x equaling x minus 1 to the 1 third. So we're taking the cube root of x minus 1. And the key here to recognize is because we're taking the odd root of an expression. The odd root of an expression is defined over the interval from negative infinity to infinity. You can always take the odd root of, of an expression. <clears throat> so in this case, in this case, f of x is clearly continuous over the closed interval from 0 to 2 because it's continuous from negative infinity to infinity. So I say, hey, I meet criteria 1. My function is continuous. In fact, if I drew the graph of it, it would look something like something like that with a, a little bit of a shift to it. So shift to the right. It would look like x to the 1 third. So x to the 1 third looks like this but it would be shifted because of the minus one, it would get shifted one to the right. So it'd be coming up like this, going from negative infinity to infinity. So if you take the derivative of it, so f prime of x equals x minus one to the, bring the exponent down and subtract one from that exponent, multiplied by the derivative of the inside function using the chain rule, but the derivative of x minus one is just one. And then if we simplify this just a little bit, we get 1 over 3 times x minus 1, negative 2 thirds, bring this expression down into the denominator position, we get positive 2 thirds sitting here. And now what we want to recognize is that when x is equal to 1, we get 1 minus 1 is 0, 0 to the 2 thirds is 0, 0 times 3 is 0, we get a 0 in the denominator. So the domain of the derivative the domain of the derivative is going to be plug in anything from negative infinity up to 1. Do not plug in a 1 because a 1 would cause division by 0 in the derivative union from 1 to infinity. 
So what we are identifying here is that the derivative does not exist at 1. So we do not meet the second criteria. The second criteria says that f prime, your derivative, has to exist on the open interval from a to b. So in this case, if I look at the open interval from 0 to 2, I can see that 1 is an element of the interval from 0 to 2, and my derivative is undefined when x is equal to 1. So I cannot use the mean value theorem. It fails criteria 2 that the derivative must exist over the entire open interval. I'm interested in the open interval from 0 to 2. The derivative doesn't exist on one of the numbers inside that interval. Mean value theorem cannot be applied. Next example. So almost the same as the previous one, except now I have an even root. I'm taking the fourth root of an expression. And anytime I'm taking the even root of an expression, the expression cannot be negative if I want real number outputs. So in this case, for the function f of x equals x minus 1 to the 1 fourth, we need to recognize we have an even root. There's an even number in that denominator position on the rational exponent. That tells us that the domain is going to be x minus 1 has to be greater than or equal to 0. In other words, x minus 1 cannot be negative. We cannot take the even root of a negative and get a real number output. So x must be greater than or equal to, adding 1 to both sides, 1. So I fail criteria 1 that the function needs to be continuous on the closed interval from a to b. We're working with the closed interval from 0 to 2, but my function doesn't start until you get to uh, x equal to 1. So the domain of this function is x is an element of the interval. x greater than or equal to 1 means from 1 to infinity, the half open interval from 1 to infinity. So my function is not continuous over the entire interval. I cannot use the mean value theorem. I fill criteria 1, so I don't even need to check whether criteria 2 differentiability holds or not because I know I filled criteria 1. And if you look at the graph of the function, it kind of drives that home. We're trying to use the mean value theorem over the interval from 0 to 2, but the function isn't continuous through here. In fact, it doesn't start until you get to 1, and then it runs to infinity. So there's a, a way that we can fail uh, being able to use the um, mean value theorem. So here I have the absolute value function. f of x equals the absolute value of x. And the absolute value of x, the domain of it, is from negative infinity to infinity. So life is good uh, because we're clearly going to be continuous. Our function, f of x, the absolute value function, is continuous from negative 1 to 1 because it's continuous from negative infinity to infinity. That's the domain of the function. The problem is that the absolute value function has a cusp when x equals 0. So we know that der uh, derivatives don't exist at cusp. So that cusp is occurring. There's a cusp at x equals 0. So f prime of x does not exist at x equals 0. And 0 is an element of the open interval from negative 1 to 1. So we fail criteria 2 that the derivative has to exist over the entire open interval. It doesn't exist over the entire open interval because it doesn't exist when x equals 0. Therefore, you cannot use the mean value theorem. So final example is f of x equals the cotangent of x. And we want to know, can we use the mean value theorem applied to the cotangent function over the interval from 0 to 2 pi? So if we look at the cotangent function, what we're expected to, to remember without looking at the graph, without sneak peeking at the graph, what we're supposed to remember is that the cotangent function has vertical asymptotes asymptotes 
Um, anytime we have an integer multiple of pi, so for pi k, where k is an integer, we have vertical asymptotes. So in fact, here I have drawn a picture. There's a vertical asymptote here at x equals 0. There's a vertical asymptote on the cotangent function at x equals pi. And those are there's a vertical asymptote when x is equal to 2 pi. So if we're trying to use the mean value theorem over the interval from 0 to 2 pi, the closed interval from 0 to 2 pi, we have three places where, discon uh, dis where there are discontinuities on that closed interval. The function is discontinuous at 0, discontinuous at 2 pi, where the other vertical asymptote is, and it's discontinuous at pi, which is uh, on the interior of this interval. So I fail criteria 1 that my function must be continuous over the entire closed interval. I have three distinct discontinuities. So if I wanted to use the, if I wanted to use the mean value theorem for the cotangent function, I would need to use a different interval. May, you know, I could go from here to here. Maybe this is from um, pi over 4 to, say, 3 pi over 4, where I have no discontinuities, then I would be okay to do that. But I cannot use the mean value theorem over the interval from 0 to 2 pi.